I'll open this section to questions. Oh, you want to dissect or ask any kind of question? There's no such thing as a dumb question. Any question you ask? Yes. Oh, a couple of us were wondering uh, what you ate for your diet. <laughs> you eat you... all kinds of junk. <laughs> okay. He used to be a vegetarian until he saw like uh, cows got cancer and rabbits got cancer right? and fish got cancer. And... All the best vegetarians, even dinosaurs, had cancer of the bone too. I don't know. I think that organic food would be the best. Organic vegetarianism, if you want it to. If you want to go that routine, stay away from sugar. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be, yes. Did you want to mention a response in the living and non living? Uh, I don't know what you mean. He said, both? do you want to mention lobe response in the living and non living mechanism? Uh, that's a concept. hard book to understand. Well, the cucumber, though. Um, Hard to get. The cucumber, in terms of um, vegetarianism, I think he's talking mm. about, about how the no, cucumber... No, he doesn't talk about that. No. Bose. No. That was Bose. Bose? Okay. Yeah. Bose. Okay. The cucumber. How the cucumber... Oh, the cucumber feels more pain. They took a needle and stuck it in the cucumber, and the pain registered very high. And so he wrote an unusual book called Response in the Living and Non-Living. The book is very old, hard to get, but it, it opens your mind to areas you never thought about, you know. Do vegetables feel pain? Mm -hmm. That's the question he asked. Wow. He measured all sorts of responses. Okay. In different things. I heard lobsters scream when you boil them. I read somewhere. So even though, even though you think they don't feel any pain, there's a, a, a sound that a lobster gives away before it's boiled or when it's boiling. Although for that, that's the shell of that. Yeah, I, I heard that was the gas expanding out yeah. of the lobster. That's interesting. But that's what's screaming too. Oh, yeah. 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 What are your beliefs on extraterrestrials? What are your beliefs on extraterrestrials? I don't deal with it because I don't know. And I can only give you an opinion. I'd rather not deal with it. <laughs> I like the answer you used to give. He feels that there, there, there is intelligent life out there because they haven't come here. <laughs> That's <was> answer. <laughs> yeah. Really? Don't In a resource-based economy, how would you, how would distribution be handled without any type of money to determine how it? Well, you go to a distribution center. You know how the library works. You don't bring any money to the library. They give you whatever books you want, but if you tell them how long you want it, that'd be better. Instead of just keeping it for two weeks or three weeks, if you don't return the books, you lose your library time. So you go to a distribution center, next door to the library is a camera center where there's cameras. You can either check them out for a month or two and then return it to the nearest camera center. That makes more cameras available to more people. And then you, you can own it if you want it, but why bother? You want to use the camera a certain time, that's when you keep it. Take it with you on vacation. But you don't really want to own anything. You don't own the house you live in, but it's made to fit your needs. Whatever your interests are, the interior is furnished by you. But you don't want to own, you want to own the world when you kick the bucket and belong to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So ownership is one of the producers of jealousy, envy, all kinds of terrible things. Oh, we don't really want to own things. We want to use things. We want to go to the lawnmower company and check out a lawnmower and use it at that time and to return it so someone else can use it. 
the concept of ownership, if you grow up in a scarcity society, you want to own things, because you want them available. And the people are afraid that, that we might run out of certain things, we won't be able to get them, so they want to own things. But in the future, we will make more things available, like the library. That's the way it's distributed. What, what Same about way. Food? What about food distribution? Same way. There's big restaurants where you go to. Instead of putting a kitchen in every home, we have in every district a restaurant that serves all kinds of food. Instead of every home having a refrigerator, yes, GE would like that. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't like the kitchen idea, the restaurant idea, for every district. What about the people that want to live outside of the city, like in the smaller homes that don't have fast access to that? Well, they're going to lose them. Everybody owns, don't really own their home. They owe money to the banks. And eventually they're going to lose them. Not all people, but the majority of people. Then they're going to get mad. Then you get time for social change. It doesn't come about unless people suffer. I'm sorry to say that. I wish they were reasonable and could make the transition, but they can. Yes. Do you take time during your day to stop your internal dialogue? Stop talking to yourself and just be free of thoughts? Do you take. Jack is very hard of hearing, so. Do you take time out of the day to stop your thinking and stop your dialogue to yourself? Is that the question? Yes. Or are you constantly, is the brain always working? And, um, or, or is your brain always working? <laughs> Do you rest it? Oh, I can't imagine it shut down. I wouldn't be able to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I look at a lot of things, and the things I can change, I leave alone. I don't get involved. Like, I don't control the weather. So, if I take my kids out on a picnic, and it's raining, I go back, but I don't say, damn the weather, damn the, and it interferes with my picnic. I don't condemn the things I can't change. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you do that, you hurt yourself too much. If you send the kid to college, and he's doing very well, and on the way back in the plane, he's in a crash, he's killed. If you say, oh my God, I sent him to college, they, they don't do that. Say planes aren't safe enough, well they are. You make them safer. You use all your energy to make things better, rather than bitch about things. Instead of complaining about the government, I would rather redesign them and offer an alternative, you know what I mean? Instead of saying the banks are corrupt, sure they are, but so is money. When they got money, you can pay off politicians. You can go to a good doctor, or you go to the doctor you can afford. This is mostly what people do. They don't have any choice. Machines do not feel. They don't feel, gee, you got a nice car. I wish I had one. They don't have that type of reaction. Do you understand that? No machine ever said, I'm going to get rid of you, you son of a bitch. You broke my other machine. If you smash a brand new computer in front of 25 brand new ones, they don't say, we'll get you. If it isn't this week or next week, we'll get you. They don't feel. Do you understand that? Okay. So don't worry about machines taking over. They never did. It's men that drop bombs on cities. They press bombs. It's men that torture other certain fighters in the army. Think about it. It's men that put men in a stretch machine and pull them apart. It's men that inflicts a death penalty. The machines don't do anything like that. It's all man-made crap. And someday, I'd like to see a machine government. But the government doesn't make judgments. Let me see if I can describe that to you. The government never assumes any responsibility. Here's how the government works. It's connected to agriculture, electrically. And if the the ground has less nutrition, it turns on a pump to supply nutrition. If it has a long drought, it supplies water. The machine is connected to energy, transportation, people, and need. It's not connected to 
arbitrary decision making. Politicians do that. They make decisions which they shouldn't do. You know what I mean? They just say, I don't know. And they should work and try to find out. If they find out, which they will eventually, that human behavior is shaped by culture, you have to redesign the culture. If you really find that out. And I believe I was shaped by the last, the big depression, 1929, the crash. That's when I was a kid. And there was uh, 15 million people unemployed, sleeping in every empty lot. And I walked around, I looked in the store windows, there were photographs, radios, people didn't have the money to buy them, that's all. And what's wrong with the system is it was based on an earlier system, which didn't deal with those problems. So it was tough luck if you were out of work. And factories had signs on them, no help wanted. So what can people do? They never thought of a better system. That's when communism and socialism came in. But they don't know what to do either. We had trouble with communism and socialism. And some people say, is your system communistic? Communism uses money. Communism has banks. Communism has armies and navies, prisons and police. We don't have any of those. We have nothing in common with any system ever invented. It's a totally different system. So when you leave here, if you like the Venus Project, talk to other people about it. It is not a part of the political system. It's a system where science and technology produce the best they can, and it goes out there. We don't design things to wear out and break down. This system does. Engineers design things to wear out and break down then you have to go buy new things. There used to be one thing in your home that was designed not to wear out and break down, and it didn't belong to you. Nobody seems to remember what it is. Yeah. Um, your community is the way it was presented. Oh, just a minute, let me answer oh, that first. Sorry. The thing that didn't break down was the telephone. It belonged to the phone company. It was very well made. You could drop it on the ground, pick it up, use it for years. But the phones you buy today, three weeks or a month, they begin to go out. They want you to buy repair and, and buy new things. That's what the fashion is all about. The spring fashion, the summer fashion, so you buy new clothes. Can I, can I mention about the phone? Yes. My, uh, my family that travels a lot, we used to live on Guam where they have severe typhoons every year. And we still have the phone from either my grandmother or my great grandmother. It still works and it doesn't require power. It only requires the phone line. It uses power from the phone line. It still works exactly how it did when they got it. Wow. Do you still have the phone company? Yeah. No, I think I think we <laughs> either bought it or sold it. I don't remember. Now's the time to criticize. So, we have any criticism or anything you want answered? Ask me now. Yes. Um, your communities, as I was saying, seem perfect. Um, do you feel that it would eliminate crime and um, I guess crime and jealousy? I don't want to eliminate crime. I want to eliminate the conditions that produce crime: hunger, want unemployment, get rid of those conditions. If you understand that the cows are not born uh, non-aggressive, they say lions are. But in the cows area, you can eat the whole herd. There's so much food, they don't give a damn. But if you had a little area of grass, the cows would be biting each other to get the grass. But if people have access to the necessities of life, they do not steal, they do not kill, they do not rob. But there's never been a society that provided for human needs, except primitive islanders. Do you think that's a population problem now? Is this scarcity problem. Scarcity. Okay. Yes. What was your question, sir? Oh, I, I was saying that if the population problem is what gets causes the scarcity, right? 
Yeah, the population problem. First, you have to do a survey of what they call the carrying capacity of the Earth. And if it, if it can carry seven billion people, if you reduce eight, you're going to have trouble. If you build a population larger than the area can support, you're going to have trouble. Crime, territorial disputes. But if you don't create that problem, if you maintain a population in accordance with what the Earth can carry, unless you invent new ways of growing food, which we will, I'm sure. I just want to tell you a little bit about it. In the future, instead of growing an apple tree, you know, culture, culture, apple tissue in glass tubes. That's what you really want. You don't want the apple tree. You want the tissue culture. You know, so in the future, instead of growing plants and picking the fruit off, we'll just grow the fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying or not? You know? Right. If you took there's a stem coming off the apple tree. That feeds the apple tissue. That's all we'll do in the future. It's called the big apple tissue and glass tubes. And give you the thing, not the whole tree. We don't want a watermelon plant. We want the watermelon. Just the, just the, the stem, the branch that feeds it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. Wait, wait. Yes. So, um, you were mentioning social change, and uh, generally the uh, Venus Project offers a solution to uh, what is currently wrong with the world. However, um, what um, I have heard a lot, when I tried to pass along for, uh, the information about the Venus Project, because I did some uh, pre-education myself before I came here, uh, generally what people are wondering, so we have right now people fighting all over the world for their freedom and trying to have their voice heard, but so there's a lot of questions which come to, okay, so when we get to the point where we, you know, um, um, put down the government and when we come to that point when this change is actually going to occur, how does that happen? So how does that, after the social... That's your question. Center, how do we get from here to there? Yeah, practically. Okay. That's what I'm working on here. Yeah. <laughs> and when you leave here and people say to you, who makes the decisions in the Venus Project? The answer is no one. That's a hard answer for them. But you tell them if you take sample of the soil from all over the world, send it to central agriculture, there they analyze the soil. They say by the contents, it's best to grow bananas or sweet potatoes or whatever. But that's based on statistics, not human opinion. Yeah. Sure. No okay. one makes decisions. They arrive at it. Do you know the difference? Mm -hmm. Arriving at a decision means I don't know. You check it out. Okay. We don't really put down the government, like you said. The governments all over are collapsing. Mm -hmm. And they really don't know what to do because they've never come upon having so much technology displacing people and people will not have the jobs to buy and then they won't have the purchasing power to buy the goods and services turned out. That's actually, whether the Venus Project was around or not, that's the end of the free enterprise system when they produce abundance without people doing it and we're coming to that. So um, you really don't have to we, we can't take down the government. No, not in that sense. I'm, my, yeah. uh, my original uh, native language is in English, so sometimes okay. I, yeah, I might not use the so right the, word. So the, the most important thing is to learn what an alternative would be. Otherwise, we'll just have chaos and the same problems. So learn as much as you can about this system and talk to other people about it. It's not a political system. It's a method of social operation. I got it from engineering. Engineers, when they talk to each other, the language is not subject to interpretation. When an engineer talks about a bridge to another engineer, they understand exactly what he means. They don't say, I think the beams are this big, and are not that big. They don't have that problem. Humans have them. The everyday language that you use should have been dropped a hundred years ago. The language is not adequate. So we can't talk to people. And engineers have no, no reason to fight one another. They say, how much a tensile strength does that wire have? 
the other way, he says, I don't know. Puts it in the machine and it says, 50,000 pounds of squaring, it breaks. And they put that down. They have no argument, no basis for it. So kids in the future will ask other kids how they view this or how they view that. And the kid will say, I don't know, I don't have enough information, I'm going to look into it. Not, you son of a bitch, you know, they get mad at each other. People will not fight, they will not go to see price fights, because every time you punch a guy in the head, it damages the brain a little bit. So they won't go to see price fights, because they're not brought up to that. And some jackass running with a football, same damn thing over and over again. People won't go to that, because they love it. People want you to go to that, so you don't think about other things. They provide entertainment, which men sing and tell jokes while the world is burning, falling apart. Some engineers are talking about terraforming Mars so we can live there, making an atmosphere while the Earth is falling apart. They're full of shit. You better take care of the Earth and make sure nothing happens here. Yes. Anybody else yes. have a question? Yes. What part does nanotechnology have in a resource-based economy? What part does nanotechnology have in a resource-based economy? Well, is there anybody who doesn't know what nanotechnology is? It's taking atoms and moving them into a molecular pattern. They believe they know with a certain type of telescope, a microscope they call it, you can grab an atom and put it where you want to. So it'll be the next 10 or 15 years, we'll be able to make whatever atomic structure we want. If you want meat already cooked, you stack the molecules in that fashion. And you don't need to kill a cow or take any life of an animal. You can make anything you want by arranging the atoms in that manner. That's what nanotechnology is. And they believe it's 10 to 15 years. Let's say it's 30 years away, which means the end of scarcity. When you ask normal people what they want, normal means fucked up. I say, they say, I want a decent job. They don't want a job. They want the necessities of life available when they want them. Yes. Any other question? How do you deal with children with learning disabilities? Oh, we take a children with, say, half the brain is damaged. They're born that way. We try to teach them all we can with half a brain, or we try to cultivate brain tissue and fill in wherever we can. Or we don't put them in an institution and give them pills to quiet them down. We don't do that. For example, today there are a lot of people that are blind that walk through town with a white stick. You know what I'm talking about? What we would do is make a gadget that looks up like this and generates sound. And they get sound feedback. <coughs> If there's a door in the way or something in front of them, they get feedback. If they have a door that's open, they can hear the sound reverberate if the door is closed. So they'll be able to walk around without the white stick. But we do work on visual problems. We work on heart disease, cancer, all diseases common to all people. We don't stop at any point and say, well, you're the president's son. You're going to get the first treatment. No. No more preference, no more status, status, you know what I mean? Stratification of society. The minute you do that, you're hurting everybody else. So really, now is the time to question the hell out of the Venus Monday, if you can. See if you can find it, yes. So what about um, people who like uh, the, the, their way of living, like for example, you know, Hannibal's and you know, people all around the world who do not like the concept uh, of the Venus Project, who like to maintain, for example, living in forests and in their own camps and so on. Like the Amish, you mean? For example. Like, like the Amish people. Yeah. That... The Amish people would want to live in a city. But we will build a city for them, a fireproof material at no charge. And the guy says, but I like wood. I don't want your material. Then if it catches fire, it's your problem. <laughs> you understand? We don't stop anybody. You can go to church, 
You go to any church, you can believe anything you want to, but you can't bring it into our cities. You can't make it a Lutheran of each child. We will expose your children to all the different religious beliefs, the non-beliefs, all the different ideas, and then the children. The children will be so brought up to understand that certain things are fictitious, certain things are real. And women are not second-rate citizens. They're right up there with the engineering planners. The women work exactly as the men do, in building airplanes, everything else, designing them and everything. Women do not wipe the baby's ass, pack their lungs, and send them to school. They're no longer sex objects. They're no longer new dancing, where they strip tease. That's all based on a stupid society. You live in a super, super stupid society. They won't even make the history books. But you're brought up to think, gee, it's great. But that you, the way you're brought up, because you don't hear anything else you know, on newscasts. If they put, invite me on the air, they say, you have seven minutes. I refuse. And I can't do anything in seven minutes. I'm just admitting that. So I don't get radio time, because I'd be a disruptor. Larry King said to me, when you come on the air, you attack the cigarette companies. I said, no, I'm not attacking them. I'm saying if you smoke continuously, you will get cancer or heart disease in the next 10 or 15 years if you live that long. And I said, why does the government sell cigarettes if they love the American people? Because they get tax on it. That's why. Is that clear? The same with liquor. But we don't outlaw it. We educate people out of it. We show, instead of saying smoking may be bad for your health, we show movies of a guy trying to breathe, real movies of a dying person with cancer of the throat. And then we show normal tissue stretches. Cancer tissue, when you pull on it, it tears. We show all that. We don't say stop smoking. We show what happens if you do smoke and continue to smoke. We don't stop you from smoking. We don't force anything on anybody. We show them living examples, not words. Don't smoke is bad. <coughs> Those are words. They don't show anything. You know what I mean? That's why I make it. very few people jump out of airplanes without parachutes. <laughs> very few. <laughs> so, how about it? Any other questions? Yes. So, that brings up a good point. Of one of the common issues with a post scarcity economy is people are worried about uh, that people just devolve into pure pleasure seeking units and that drugs would spike. Do you think that, like, what if a person, even after seeing all those videos, still wants to say, you know what, I really like drinking, I don't care what it's doing to my liver, I still do it. Do you think that'd be a problem for the Venus Project? Like, how do y'all address that if people don't? I can only try. I can try to tell you. When children study engineering, the basis of it, their structural thickness of the beams and what they're made of has been tested first. If they don't want to do that, they can't practice engineering. So anybody that's got an opinion, if they love their opinion and like what they're doing, they can't get the chance to practice it. When you go to a company and you say, I'd like to work on airplanes, they ask you what your background is. None. If they study aviation, then come back. Jacques, how would you handle somebody who um sees the films, but still chooses that they want to have the, have the pleasure of cigarettes or the pleasure of alcohol. How would you handle something like that? Well, we can, we can let them finish their lives if they want to. You know, the thing that you're talking about is really a transitional <coughs> issue. People have been so flattened out in this culture, they're so stressed out, they're so bored, they're so overworked that all they want to do is come home and relax, and then they make entertainment for them to dumb them down to learn about anything else that just occupies their mind. In the future, when you're raised in a resource-based economy, kids will be raised to be interested in things, to be creative, and want to, from a very early age, learn how to solve problems and look at things and try and make them better. You, you, you don't get kids that 
that are like what you're talking about. There, um, you know, once you once you learn engineering and technology and how to do things, and you have free access to learn that, you you perpetuate that, and you want to participate in a creative way. You don't want to just sit around and do nothing. That behavior is usually pushed anyway. I don't think I've ever heard of a single child or a young person who had their first cigarette or their first uh, drink of alcohol and didn't think it was like the worst thing they ever. I mean, they're conditioned eventually into it as an escape mechanism. But most people, you know, their first beer is like, oh, this is delicious. They're like, oh, <laughs> this is kerosene, you know what I mean? But you, you, you get, again, you force yourself to use the same thing with cigarettes. They're usually choking on the first time they try it. I mean, we're able to make cigarettes. Yeah. They don't uh, force us to do anything. For example, today, when a couple get married today, the average marriage today lasts five years. Because people really don't have much in common. And the word love, the word love doesn't have much meaning with people. When a guy says to a girl, I love you, does he want to get laid? Does he concern himself with a girl? That's very hard to know. Well, in the future, you'll know because love, the word will be thrown out and the new word will take its place, called extensionality. That means an extensional device enables you to grab a can off the top shelf. And when people are extensional to you, they make your life better to knowledge by helping you understand things. Because the guy says to a girl, I love you, that's a nothing thing. It offers nothing. You know what I mean? But if he treats her, decently and, and explains things to her, or she explains things to him, that's real love or extensionality. But today, when a guy says, I love your dimples when you smile, I love the way your hair falls, that's where you open the door. All that's bullshit. <laughs> but I can't tell you that it'll be eradicated. It'll be outgrown, not eradicated. Nobody puts up a law and say, you can't talk to girls that way. It's just outgrown, you know what I mean? They no longer do it. Like you no longer go to a guy to put shoes on your horses. He's gone. The ice man's gone. But the elevator operator's gone. They don't exist in modern buildings. Yes. Do you think that some of the things you talk about are inevitable if humans don't kill themselves? I don't know that. We may kill each other in nuclear war. I don't know that. Don't ask me. Do you think we'll live free of war? That depends on how much work you do when you leave here. The more work you do on changing people, the less problems you will have in the transition. But if you leave here and do nothing, nothing will happen. And there are other problems other than just war. We're poisoning the air, we're poisoning the food, we're poisoning the earth. The environment. You know, there's so many things that are so destructive. And you say it doesn't affect me, so I'm not going to do anything yet. If you wait too long, there's a point of no return. We haven't reached that yet. That's why I'm working. So do whatever you can talking to you. The Venus Cutting has nothing to do with words like love and kindness, because it has no poverty, no unemployed, and no old folks that can't get to the hospital. All of those people are taken care of. There's no more charity, no more goodwill in this place. Everybody is taken care of. And you don't owe anything to anybody. The earth is here for the use of people. And all nations are treated the same. All the nations must join together and take care of the earth. If they don't do that, they'll kill each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're all the same. Filipinos, Greeks, Japanese, Chinese, all the same people. Only they're brought up in different environments, which is a pain in the neck. All we have to do is unify the world and devise a language that has common meaning, not subject to interpretation. That's what your major problem is, your language. So if you want more on that, the book is called Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. Another one called Language in Thought and Action by Hayakawa. The subject is called Semantics, about meaning of words, how the same words to another person will offend them. But hold on, if I use the term bullshit, 
You know what I mean? I can't accept what you're saying. That's what I mean. And like I said, nothing to do with the shit of a bull. <laughs> There's no bad language. And if women want to be treated as equals, that's what happens when they come here. I don't hold back on my language because there's women here and children. If you bring children, that's your own problem. They'll be subject to the same language. Because they, children understand more than you think if you treat them right. Treat them like adults. Don't treat them as babies. If you gave a kid in the future a balloon, he said, what am I, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I got a balloon and Billy's got one. None of that. Children will not behave like they behave today. You think that's normal? It's not. It's an insufficient environment mm -hmm. that we're raising children in. Any other questions? So when you leave here, I want you to be able to answer any questions that somebody might ask you. And not everybody is going to welcome the Venus project with open arms because mm -hmm. they have their own projections. They think that it's a world run by scientists. Scientists don't run anything. The government once asked a group of scientists, can you put a man on the moon? They said, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We don't know what a man can stand. They said, we don't know what you're talking about, the government. So they said, we have to put man in a centrifuge and whirl him around and see how many G's he can take. And if he can take nine G's, he can take off at seven G's. But if he take off at ten G's, everybody will die. And if you give a man a glass of water in a spaceship and they drink it, the water will come out all around in the spaceship, all over the place. So you have to put it in a rubber tube and squeeze it in his mouth. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't know. That's what that means. I don't know. And if man lives out in space, the calcium in his bones begin to disappear. He can't walk anymore. So you have to take all that stuff into consideration and come forward with, we don't know yet. They even made exercise machines in spaceships to get a person to work out. It doesn't stop the calcium loss. So they use, I don't know, which is wonderful to me. Those are the most important three words. If the average person learned to do that, to say, I don't really know. I used to ask people years ago, you think we'll ever get to the moon? Not in a thousand years. I say, have you studied space science? No. Have you studied rockets? No. Well, how do you do that? Because I was brought up to believe, like most of you people, everyone should have a right to their own opinion. Did you ever hear that? That's the way you're brought up. That's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. If you live across the way from me and I see ten guys coming out of your apartment, I can have all kinds of opinion. <laughs> I should say I don't know what she does. She could be a language instructor, an art instructor, a ballet instructor. I don't know. What do I say? If you ask me, I'll tell you. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> You're turning loose people against one another. Just learn how to say, I don't know. I can't. I don't have enough information. And that's why, that's what I'm trying to do, get that across to people. A freedom, total freedom is, is impossible to give people total freedom. Think about it. Any other questions? Yeah. What about the big question? People ask you, why am I here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Some girls came over me and said, I think you were put here by God to make the earth a beautiful place. <laughs> and she said, why am I here? She. I said, you're here because your father didn't use a condom. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody likes to believe they're here for a useful purpose. You know, I'm not here for any purpose. I just choose to take this direction rather than success in the business world. Do you believe that there will be a healthy competition between children as they're growing up? So, for example, there's a child who, who plays a guitar and who is very, I'm going to use the wrong term, gifted, but, and then there's the other child who can paint but would want to play guitar. So, just like that basic 
uh, example and then how they grow up and then how they resolve the conflict and then just having that basic I, I, at this point, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I know what I'm talking about, but having that basic human instinct that they would want to hurt somebody because uh, they are uh, representing something which, they're, which, which they would want to be. Is there a basic human instinct for no. competition no or to hurt somebody? No, oh, Really? And brought up to be competitive. Mm -hmm. If you go to a, a Buddhist monk school, you grow up not to be violent. We know we can bring you up to be a religious fanatic or an atheist or a murderer or anything. We can shape human behavior by telling people lies about other people. That the, the Mexicans always sleep with their sombrero and they're lazy. They sleep in the sun whenever they get a chance. To. And blacks will lie all the time. They teach you all things that are false. And that's why you have stupidity and hatred amongst people. And no nation deals with that because it's politically unsettling. Very few people talk like I talk. They don't like it because it produces too much antagonism. Because people fear the trust, to trust other people. If you trust somebody, how do you know they're going to make the world a better place? Because they can't behave any other way in our system. Our system, we design cities to, to gratify human needs. I just had one example I found here. This is a bad drawing of a man sitting in a cave. And a man sitting in a cave, when, you, when you're a child, if you climb a hill, if you step on a severe incline, you slip. If you step on a slight flat, you get up the hill. So in climbing a hill, we look for the flat areas. And we step in those flat areas. But man never comes up and says, I gotta make steps. After he lives there 10 years walking up and down, he generates steps in the flat area by going up and down the tent. Then when he moves, he cuts the steps off. But he must encounter the problem first. It's the problems that generate what you call incentive, things like that. Once you know that you're not born as a thief or a prostitute or a beggar or lazy or super creative, you're not born that way. You made that way. By conditions, you live on it. Now, if you don't understand how those conditions work, if a child cleans his daddy's car, and daddy doesn't walk over and says, thank you very much, for cleaning the car, I appreciate that. Would you like to go to a movie? Be nice to the child. But you say, when well, you get through cleaning the car, mow the lawn, God damn it. <laughs> get up off your ass and do that. But if you don't thank people for what they do, you tend to get them to be avoiding your appearance. Yes. What, what do you think were the most important aspects of the condition in which you were brought up that made you uh, how you are? Oh, I was brought up when I was 13 in the last depression. And my grandfather allows me out. He said people came from all over the world and they brought ideas to America. Religion, language, everything. And he said to me, never pledge allegiance to any one country. If you love people, pledge allegiance to the earth to take care of it. Never dump radioactive material into the rivers and lakes or the ocean and work for the benefit of all people. Never work for your country. He said, patriotism is a disease. It separates nations. And I bought that. So when I went back to school, the teacher says, we're all going to say, pledge allegiance to the United States of America. I said, I can't do that. He <laughs> said, you can't. You went by the ear, right to the principal's office. He says, he doesn't want to pledge allegiance to the flag. And the principal said to the teacher, you're excused. The minute she left, he put his arm around me. He says, why don't you want to pledge allegiance? I said, because there was a time when most people believed, believed the earth was flat. And it isn't what people believe that's right. It's what really works that's right. So he said to me, what do you think about teaching? That's terrible. <laughs> I spelled cat with a K when I was a kid. 
And the teacher said, that isn't the right spelling. Now that doesn't tell me anything. That isn't the right spelling. But if she said, we use a C instead of a K, that would tell me right away. So she says, it's not what I told you. That didn't tell me anything. So you have to have a language that informs people. Not, not a bawling out, that's not what I told you. You understand? So as our language grows up, we will learn to speak meaningfully. Today we don't. So you have arguments between husbands and wives, between gun lovers, between all people, because they haven't learned that. And once you learn that, you say where are they coming from, and you adjust your language to where they're coming from. You know what I mean? What kind of professions should people be getting into right now in college or you know, technical schools or whatever to... Any kind of technical thing. Yeah, anything. But um, I'm asking because we're looking to go into college soon and um, we want to know what kind of professions should we start getting into or should just everybody start getting into... Automation. To, to be productive. Computer sciences. Artificial intelligence. Nanotechnology. I can give you a lot of different things. Anything in the... Look at our website. Robotics. Okay. Anything in the physical sciences. Anything in the physical sciences. But sociology also. Not psychology. Not psychology. Sociology. psychology tries to adjust you to the system. Okay. And I was actually thinking about psychology. What's that? I was actually thinking about psychology. It's what I did. Um, psychology. Or what about it? I used, I used to do psychology, but I've been looking at my, you know, what other options I, you know, I should be considering. Well, the problem is it's, it's adjusting people to a sick system, so it's right. really sort of counterproductive. I mean, yeah, that's my I, new I options. They, they mean well, but yeah. it's... Unless you go into behaviorism within psychology. Behaviorism? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was kind of looking at. Any other questions? Yes. A lot of this development and these ideas are very technically oriented to produce the most efficient and practical ways of being efficient and so forth. What role does actual art have in this relative to being practical uh, are you talking about fine art? Yes. All right. First of all, you've got to remember that the artist that's brought up in the given society, they tell him what good art is, what bad art. I think Picasso is a lousy illustrator myself. But hype, you know what I mean? The publicist Market. that pushed that, pushed Picasso, he can't draw worth a shit. <laughs> now, as far as representative drawings. So people in the future will be taught how to do things. In other words, if, if a family was kidnapped in America and brought to another planet, they say, what do you have on your plan? We have telephone, refrigerators. They say, how does a refrigerator work? Most Americans don't know. How anything works in their home. Do you know that? Most Americans. So how are you going to deal with that? Yes. Uh, I'm um, working on opening up uh, different um, Venus projects, educational centers around the United States or even the globe. Um, Yes, yeah. we're working toward that. We're working right now on a business proposal for a research center and an educational center. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a long process without funding. We're going, hopefully, for grants. Yeah, so again, back to um, how many, my question from before, how many people is working on this? And you said thousands and thousands all around the world. So if there are volunteers who believe in this project, um, isn't there a possibility to, if, even if they don't know how to educate or how to, how to pass along this message, for them to be educated so that people would have, you know, local centers where they can actually come and get this knowledge and get this idea because a lot of people right now, especially where I'm from, for example, they don't even know about the Venus Project. I just learned from it at, at the beginning of this year once I moved to America. Slovenia, so, we have a good group in Slovenia. Mm -hmm. They just published a huge book on the Venus Project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Many languages. Oh, you're talking about Paradise or Slovenia? Well, the last, the last documentary we did was translated into 24 different languages. We have a linguistics team. No, 20, 29, 30. 29, good, yeah. 30 now. 
Excuse me. All you can do is talk to people. You yeah. can't twist that wrist. Don't force anybody. But we have what's called the activists have organized themselves and have established POCs, which are point of contacts for different locations around the world. Mm -hmm. And our new website we are going to have where anybody interested in the Venus Project can sign up on, on a world map so you'll know who you can reach in your local area and speak with and talk to. And there are people in different chapters who have started, who have actually physical locations mm -hmm. where people can come and learn at that location. In Greece we have one. And they, opened a non-profit organization called Pangea. In Israel we have one where they have a location. Um, in many places they do. They don't go along with the policies of Israel. And none of the activist groups go along with the policy of that country. Well, they're learning about the Venus Project. On, online we also have somebody who's giving courses going through... We have. Yeah, we have, I don't know how many lectures, 20, how many lectures do we have on tapes, audio and visual? We, and they're going through the different lectures, they're reading the book chapter by chapter, they're discussing it. Um, like in Bulgaria, they had a course there, the person who gave that is starting it internationally on the internet, where he had people for over a year coming to his location, reading uh, different chapters of the book for an hour, and then discussing it for two hours. So a lot of this is happening all over, and then listening to tapes and listen and discussing that as well, when and then reading here, some of the book, some of the books on the book list, and going over that as well. When you leave here, you'll be given a book and certain things, and read that book twice. It tells you how most people get to be the way they are. It helps you understand. But if you don't read the book twice, you won't have the ability to talk to people. So if you read the book, it tells you different aspects of the culture. And like you somebody said to me, what if two people have an idea and they're both good? Who picks which one is used? We use both systems. Why do you have to pick the right one or the left one? We use any system that works. Is that clear? Okay. And if you go to our website under Get Involved, you might want to see some things you get involved, you know, participate there and stay tuned for the new website which hopefully will be out within a month and there'll be many more things on it that you can get involved with. Anything you want to add to that, Sean? Um, well, involved. for your example specifically and anybody else's is that if there's nobody in your area right now doing anything, become that person that is in your area doing something. And that's, uh, you know, you can schedule things at your library or your community center to do screenings of Paradise or Oblivion, you can throw up flyers around the community. You can do a lot of things, and you can communicate to the Venus Project by contacting Roxanne directly, mm -hmm. by calling or emailing admin at thevenusproject.com. There's a lot of things, and the best thing to do is go to thevenusproject.com, get involved get section. Involved. Yeah. yeah, and then that's, it'll be updated through time, so things might change, so keep visiting And there's it. an educational channel that Sean did. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, we have a couple TV of YouTubes. Joel TV has a YouTube, TV. and I have a TVP education YouTube, and... And YouTube.com forward slash. There's a lot, yeah, a lot on the internet. There's askjockfresco.com. Yeah, yeah. Somebody made two of um, just questions and answers and text and audio and video from yeah, you don't people even asking have to, questions. To get involved, you don't even have to be in a physical location and be in a room with other people. You can virtually be in a room with people. We have Skype, we have TeamSpeak, we have websites, we have the YouTube, so there's plenty of stuff to do. Okay, so okay, you, you guys are available for a, a lot of questions, which a lot of people might have. 24 yeah. and, and then we have official, um, well, projects that the Venus Project is doing. And people are joining that and working with that. You can see that on the website. And the new one will even be clearer, asking for different resumes on different projects that we need. Have you seen the new website yet? No, yeah. I'll show you. Can you show us, I guess? Yeah. Okay, so I, I want to thank all of you for coming, and I hope you talk to other people. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. Don't force it. Mm -hmm. By the way, when the Ku Klux Klan said to me, you're a smart guy, what do you think of the Ku Klux Klan? I said it was a great organization, but it didn't go far enough. I said, what do you mean? That gets here. If you attack, you lose it. You understand?
don't attack. Whatever person believes, so I can respect that. And then go on, but it doesn't go far enough. It doesn't include enough people. <laughs> At least you stand the chance. That's how I turn them around. I did not force it. Didn't say, you can't come to our meetings anymore. No. Don't do that. Don't attack. And I said, you know, what do you think of the Filipino right organization? Great organization. It just doesn't, it doesn't go far enough. That always gets the ear. Or if you attack, you lose it. Okay. I want to thank you again for coming. Thank you.